This show is brought to you by KetConnection.com. Draft beverage supplies and solutions. Cat Connection has the experience and the expertise to get you set up. Tap your favorite craft beer, homebrew, wine, cold brew, kombucha, sparkling water, and more at home with ease using a KetConnection.com dispensing kit. Go to KetConnection.com, use our promo code BNW, that's for Booze News Weekly, and save 10% off your first order. Some restrictions may apply. Visit KetConnection.com for more details. Coming up on this episode of Booze News Weekly, Russian River postpones their in-person Pliny the Younger release, Katy Perry gets into the non-alcoholic biz, Boston Beer is down on their earnings projections, and the Brow Bevial show is suspended until 2023. It's Monday, January 24th, 2022. Welcome to this episode of Booze News Weekly, your source for weekly beverage industry news and commentary delivered quickly and conveniently. My name is Joshua Steubing. If you haven't already, make sure you click that like button below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification icon to make sure you never miss an episode. Now let's take a look at the headlines of the week. Russian River Brewing postpones Pliny the Younger 2022 beer release. The story came from MercuryNews.com. Russian River Brewing's event of the year, the release of Pliny the Younger, has been postponed. Not surprisingly, COVID-19 is to blame. Russian River said not only is Sonoma County experiencing a record-shattering spike in COVID cases and increased hospitalizations, but we are in the midst of our own internal surge. With 20 employees since before Christmas either testing positive or quarantining because of exposure. Both the Santa Rosa and Windsor Brew Pubs had to close for a week in early January because of short staffing and hours have been reduced on other days. This is unprecedented, the website continues. We as a company have never had this many employees out at a time for any reason, including wildfire evacuations. The good news is that the release isn't being canceled, just delayed. Right now, they are looking at the dates of March 25th to April 7th at both brew pubs, which at least means you might get some better weather while you stand in line outside. The batch of Pliny the Younger that was brewed for January will be distributed to their wholesale accounts, so if you've been enjoying Pliny on draft at a California tap room or bar, you'll probably get to drink the new batch starting February 7th. As someone who lives in Central Texas and doesn't get any Russian River brewing on tap, any of the Pliny's or or, or any of the beer that they offer. I think that's a fair compromise. You know, since the pandemic started and restrictions and protocols have happened in this country, I think it's been an unfortunate byproduct that we've seen breweries shutting down, tap rooms having to close down, short staff issues, or I guess staffing shortage issues, not short employees, but the lack of employees we've been seeing happen across this country. Is it affecting your area as well? Here in Central Texas, our brew pubs are pretty much operationally normal, it feels like, but every now and then we do see signs on restaurants or tap rooms or whatever that say, you know, pardon our the wait you might have to wait a little longer we're short staffed it seems like that problem is occurring nationwide but i can only speak for my little anecdotal bubble that i'm thankful our tap rooms and stuff seem to be operationally normal for the time but again big releases like this it's always a bummer when they get delayed but the good news like the article said is that it's not post or pardon me it's not canceled just delayed so Big fans, you you can uh, wait and be patient. And those of us who don't get it at all, we can beg you to ship it to us. Moving on, I know the show is called Booze News Weekly, and I've had non-alcoholic content on already. And we continue with this headline. Katy Perry gets into the wellness game with Dessois, a line of non-alcoholic aperitifs. From Vogue.com, more news from the non-alcoholic sector of the beverage industry. Katy Perry released her first wellness drink line, Dessois, earlier this month. If you're about to start sober, you wary, we're here for you, announced Katy Perry. I've never heard it called that before. Inspired by the French ethos of pleasure with restraint, the brand's moniker comes from the French phrase matri de soi, which translates to self-control. However, it does not translate to easy on the wallet because you'll be paying $25 for a four pack of eight ounce cans or $25 for a single 750 milliliter bottle. 
Dessois is offered in three different formulations, drawing inspirations from white wine, red wine, and rosé. While Dessois marks a new chapter for Perry, it's not her only foray into the wellness world. She's already an investor in both plant-based meat company Impossible Foods and sustainable farming outfit Appeal Sciences. And in 2020, she, with two other partners, acquired long-standing popular health food company Bragg. As Perry embarks on a residency in Las Vegas, the senior admits that her rigorous work schedule serves as a daily reminder of the importance of self-care. Perry states that she will always advocate for a bit of indulgence in the mix. I think wellness is taking care of yourself the way you see fit without sacrificing the little joys in life, she says. She's hoping that Dessois, 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 She's hoping that Dessois achieves that balance. I just like saying that word, Dessois. That's why I included it this week. No, I included it because I think it's interesting that we're seeing a ton of investment from celebrities and just venture capitalist investors in this market still. It's not just non-alcoholic drinks, but now the niches are forming of non-alcoholic wellness drink and aperitif Let's be real. Raise your hand if you purposely had an aperitif before or after a meal, knowing that's what you were doing and not just drinking your favorite alcoholic beverage. Like, I had Jägermeister after a meal recently. Actually, it was Killapitch. Sorry to my friends in Dusseldorf for confusing the two. I had it after a meal because it said on there it was an aperitif, and I go, I was just going to have a shot of it. But now I feel fancy. I think we're going to see over time as new beverage trends emerge, non-alcoholic sector being one that seems to be growing steadily, that we will see more investment and niche brands like this launching off of that. I think it's good for Katy Perry, you know, diversifying her portfolio. She's already shown a commitment to wellness in her other stuff. I guess wellness. I don't know if fake meat is well. I'm not going to argue with you if you like fake meat. Good for you. I like the real thing. But Getting into this non-alcoholic trend is further solidifying her commitment in her eyes to, like she said, fitness and being balanced. So what do you think? Are you are you buying into these niche non-alcoholic brands that are popping up or does it not mean anything to you and you could care less about Katy Perry? Let me know in the comments below. So let's go back to craft beer with this headline, Boston Beer Down 10% on Lower 2021 Earnings Guidance. The story came from Yahoo.com's finance division. Shares of the Boston Beer Company have plunged more than 10% in after-hours trading in early January, after the company slashed its earnings view for 2021. Management cited that stronger-than-anticipated supply chain expenses, including cost of additional damage and expired inventory stemming from reduced shipment volumes, are persistent headwinds. These factors are likely to lower gross margins for 2021. Boston Beer now forecasts shipment growth for its products to be lower than its expectations. This is caused by a greater wholesaler inventory reduction, mainly hurting their brand truly. Nonetheless, consumer demand is robust and tracking at the upper end of management's expectations. Boston Beer will report its full 2021 results on February 16th, 2022. A glance at this craft brewer's price performance shows that it has declined 5.6% in the last three months against the industry's 3.9% rise, with Boston Beer witnessing a persistent slowdown in the hard seltzer category. The sluggish hard seltzer trends also hurt Boston Beer's bottom line in the third quarter of 2021. Do you guys think this might be a case of Boston Beer doing too much, biting off more than it could handle. When it acquired Truly, I was kind of surprised just because Boston Beer, uh, Sam Adams. I didn't think about hard seltzer, but in the same breath, like I've said last week's episode and earlier just now, it's not surprising as beer brands are trying to get a piece of the action that's trending. It's not uncommon to go to even a local craft brewery and they have a hard seltzer on tap, usually an in-house on seltzer, but it's not uncommon. I mean, they might not be distributing it, but I see more people at get togethers, at picnics, at family functions and at bars ordering hard seltzers than I've seen before. So I am kind of surprised that truly is what they're saying is responsible for a lot of this uh, lower earnings guidance because 
Truly, I believe, is the number two brand behind White Claw in the country for market share of hard seltzer. So what do you think? Do you have any thoughts? Have you noticed uh, less people drinking Truly or Boston beer in your area? Can we make this make sense? Let me know in the comments below. And our last story is a little bit heartbreaking for me because as a person who attends industry events and haven't been to this one since 2018, mainly because 2019 I wasn't invited, and then 2020 got canceled, 2021 canceled, and the headline, Brow Bevial suspended for another year. From Inside.Beer, Brow Bevial, one of the largest trade shows in the beverage industry, will not take place in 2022 as scheduled, but will be postponed by another year. Already in 2020 and 2021, the fair could not take place as a normal trade fair due to the conditions of the COVID-19 pandemic. After the short-term cancellation of the Bevial Summit, which was to replace the traditional Brow Bevial trade show last November, the next event was planned for this year. However, since the organizers of Drink Tech have announced that their next show will be held in Munich from September 12th to September 16th, 2022, and a survey of potential exhibitors has shown that they are highly unlikely to participate in both shows in Germany in the same year, the Brau Bevial has now taken the decision to not return before 2023. Today, Nuremberg Messi, the organizer of Brau Bevial, issued the following statement. After intensive consultation with the companies and associations represented on the Brau Bevial Expedition Advisory Committee, the event organizer, Nuremberg Messi, has decided to suspend Brow Bevial 2022 from the 8th of November to the 10th of November 2022. By taking this step, we are reacting early to the concerns of the market and ensuring planning reliability for the industry, says Andrea Calrate, executive director of Brow Bevial and Bevial Family. The next Brow Bevial, therefore, will be held from the 14th to the 16th of November 2023 in Nuremberg. The story really doesn't affect me because I wasn't going this year either way, but trade shows like this are, are so much fun. My favorite part of being in the industry are going to bid shows like the Brow. Brow Bevial, but we call it the Brow. Us insiders call it the Brow. Um, it, it, it is important to note Drink Tech is another huge show that happens in Germany. And so this story... Unlike some of the other ones, sometimes this one made sense to me because trade shows are expensive. A company is spending 10, 12, 15,000 on the low end US dollars, you know, in euro 14, 15, 20,000 in to, to have a show, to have a proper booth for that week long event, all your stay, your food. It's a very expensive endeavor. And so already when drink tech, which doesn't happen every year and the brow are lined up in the same year, frequently you don't get the exact same exhibitors going to both shows because again, who has that kind of money to show at both? Sometimes they have an, a booth at one and they just walk the other. And the very, very big companies have booths at both. But again, the very big companies have very big pocketbooks. So it, it is sad for me. I won't get to go to Nuremberg this year. And, and they're canceling it so early. And at first, when I heard they're canceling it, it's only January. The show doesn't happen until November. Ah, but Drink Tech isn't canceling. So that's why the Brow is, is canceled, but Drink Tech in Munich will happen. So yeah, this is just another case of COVID messing something up, but it made sense. If exhibitors aren't willing to commit, if sponsors aren't willing to pay, and if it's questionable that attendees are going to show up, then yeah, what's the point of having the show? You might as well call it early and put all your eggs in the let's plan for next year basket because you can at least try to guarantee the best show possible if you have enough. You know, if they waited long, you need some organizations that we're a part of waited to the very last minute last year and in 2020 before canceling their events. And that causes some stress of, oh, I booked travel, I booked hotel. A lot of that stuff's refundable, but it's a pain in the butt to have to try to call these customer service lines and tell them this and that. So I guess the earlier, the better. As heartbreaking as it may be, the earlier, the better is probably the right way to do it. So that's it for this week. If you have any tips or industry news, email it to joshua at homebrewhappyhour.com or use the hashtag BNW on social media. Also, you can find this episode and so much more content and articles available at homebrewhappyhour.com. Make sure you visit our show sponsored kegconnection.com and use our promo code BNW for 10% off your first order. 
Have a great week and we'll see y'all soon.